Hey and welcome to another drill. Today I will show you how to create this Premier League logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. And I don't want to say that it's hard to create, it just has a lot of small details and pieces, so it just takes more time. So let's not waste any more time by talking. The left is an image downloaded from the internet, the right is the actual logo created inside Microsoft PowerPoint. And usually when I'm using PowerPoint instead of just Microsoft Word, it's mostly because PowerPoint has this merge shapes function which we will use a lot this time. So I will jump to blank slide where I already have this logo pasted. I will zoom in and let's probably start with the crown because the crown is probably the easiest part. So I will insert a new shape being the oval and I will try to copy the bottom part of the oval. And as you can see, I already have the, my shape being like a semi-transparent color, which is nice to have. But if you usually create a new shape, you will see it like in the blue color. So if I create a new shape, it will usually be this this kind of blue color like this what you can do is you can select any color you want any color any fill and the fill could be like transparent so i can increase the transparency for the fill if i right click and select the set the default shape it's kind of not very good name for this function if i select this next time i draw any shape so insert shapes let's draw a rectangle it will have those properties and it's really a good idea to keep a fill because if you set a no fill it kind of looks fine but when you start trying to select the shape it's kind of hard because you have to click over the outline so that's just a tip to keep the fill but to of course make the fill transparent just so you can see the underlying picture so again let's create a new shape being the oval and let's copy the outline of the bottom part of the crown and as you can see the left and right side are a little bit of curved so i will also insert a shape being the oval in here on the left side like this and I will copy it and I will copy it by dragging it with the control key pressed on my keyboard just so I don't have to press the control C and control V shortcuts. Then I will insert for example rectangle whatever and I will select the rectangle or maybe I will select all those three ellipses I will select merge shapes union then I will select first the rectangle then all those merged ellipses and select merge shapes subtract so I will subtract those and then I need to create a shape with those like spikes. So I will create a new custom shape being the freeform shape. So insert shapes, the freeform shape. And I will just click starting from here, going down and tracing the outline of the crown. And if you want to go you know, extra step, you can see that the left and right uh, spikes are just a little bit curved. So I can select right click and select edit points and make sure that also the left and right spikes are just a little bit curved. Then I will select first the crown base, then the new shape and select merge shapes, subtract. And voila, we have a nice looking crown. So that's, that's the easy part. I will select home, select selection pane, and I will probably hide my crown if I can find it somewhere. It's, it's not here, that's kind of strange. When I'm, seeing, when I'm not seeing this shape in here. Okay, I have to figure it out. So I will hide it for now. I will not care about it for now. Now, if you take a look at the like the main shape of the of the lion, you can see it has a lot of those like spikes, but those are a little bit curved. Usually, when you trace those uh, edges, it's a good idea to use ellipses, but it can get pretty much very complicated very soon because you will have a lot of them. So maybe instead of using an ellipses as a base shape, I will actually use the intersection of ellipses. So I will select uh, or create two ellipses, select merge shapes, intersect. And I will use this piece as a, as a base shape. So I will try to rotate it, scale it and position it just to somehow copy the shapes of those of the lion. So maybe like this. And as you can see, I'll probably not be you know 100 percent right, but I want to be as, as close as possible without the need to manually trace the, the shape most of the time. And when I'm resizing the shape, I'm holding the control key on my keyboard just so it's resized from both sides, so left and right side at the same time. On top, this seems to be like the continuous curve, so I will try to maybe use one shape for this entire curve, if that's, if that's possible. Not quite sure if that's possible, but we will try. Okay, seems like I'm... I probably would need more shapes for this, so I will, I will, you know, start with this one. Then I will copy this one more time later on. I want to focus more on this bottom bar first, so I will trace this shape, this bottom one. And 
as you can see it's a lot of positioning you i'm usually using my arrow keys on my keyboard just so i can get a precise control over the position and when we are rotating the shape it's usually a good idea to move the mouse as far as away from the shape as possible that way you will be increasing by a small amount so if you are you know close to the shape it's hard to get a very small adjustments as for the rotation so this one is, seems to be fitting pretty nicely i will copy this one as well okay it seems like you know I cannot trace this gap so I will just leave it there and maybe leave it for another shape so this should be fine as it is so the only main missing piece is this like the second half of the of the head so I will just maybe use this piece in here like this and maybe later on I will just adjust it a little bit more hopefully that will give me some Oh, sorry, I've moved the image. That will give me some smooth shape. I'm a little bit worried it will not be the case. But let's wait until we, we will get there. So I have like those many of those base shapes. I believe I need something down here. So I will maybe insert a new freeform or maybe that will be like a... Maybe freeform is fine. So I will insert freeform like this. Which I will merge with this bottom shape. So I will select both those shapes. I will merge those together. Union. Then I will select the ellipse and I will try to trace this gap in here. And when you are uh, merging the shapes, when you are subtracting the shapes, it's the, it's important in which order you select those shapes. So if I select first this shape and then this shape, it will not work as expected. I first have to select the main shape, then the ellipse, then the subtract will work as expected. So this is the subtract. And I'm also almost fine with like the outline. So the only missing piece is something in between. I need something in the middle. So I will again insert a new freeform shape, which I will roughly trace all the parts which are not currently being overlaid by any shape. Then I will simply select all those shapes which I have. Maybe before I do, I will just copy one of those shapes to the side in case I need it later on. So I will select all those shapes. Hopefully I've selected all those shapes and select Merge Shapes Union. And as you can see, I did get this like the outline of the head. This will be handy because I can use this shape to subtract parts of, of the shape of the head. So that's what I will do right now. I will rotate it like this to subtract this part. And I guess, you know, I, I could be a little bit smart about this this part this uh, where i've accidentally added a lot of uh, a lot of shapes okay I, i'm not quite sure what i will do with this one maybe i will just subtract this and edit it back edit this back using this shape which has to be quite thin maybe like this and one more for here and seems like I haven't copied this one for subtracting so I will just paste it again okay so one step at a time I will subtract this shape then I will add all those three shapes together so I will union those okay that should be fine for now so that's like the outline of the head of the lion and we have the crown and the outline we have to still remove some pieces so we have to still remove those ears and the face so let's start with the ears this left ear looks like a two ovals overlaid on top of each other so that's what i will exactly do right now i will draw a new ellipse in the size of the outer ear duplicate it i will subtract those shapes I have to of course select it in a different order so i will subtract those shapes and subtract this shape from the main head that will be easy and this one looks also like two ellipses but those should be like pretty big so i will draw them in a quite big shape like this again i will subtract those and you will see if i subtract this shape from the main head 
also this left part will be subtracted so I don't want this so I will maybe draw a rectangle and before subtracting it from the head I will subtract the rectangle from the main part then I will subtract this from the head actually not text box but subtract okay so those are the ears then I will trace the like the face and maybe there is uh, some way how to do it usually using like a default shapes seems to me that maybe for me it will work if I just trace this using the custom shape being the freeform shape so I will just try to trace it and I will just trace those points I will not tra trace those uh, curves yet so as you can see I'm just tracing those individual points then I will add the cur those curves later on using the edit points function so I'm just really clicking on those like extreme points and making sure that it, it covers this piece which I don't want here so I will right click select edit points and for all those uh, pieces I've actually added the point I don't want to add point I will just to move the handle so for all those pieces where it should be curved I will select those two points around the curve and adjust those handles to be just a little bit um, curved to follow the shape below or the image below and just because those are very small curves those arcs aren't really big we don't need extra points in there you know just two points should be enough to copy most or all of those um, curved elements and curved parts this one is quite big but as you can see the handles allows us to make those adjustments pretty easily actually when I'm doing all those changes um, you know, the, the, what I'm worried the most is accidentally clicking outside and I have to just select the shape again you know right click and select edit points again just a lot of time when I have to make those adjustments so I will select the head select the face and subtract this and I will continue with those three small shapes that should be very easy because those there are only a few points so I will trace first shape before making adjustments I will probably trace the second shape as well and the third shape as you can see only four points for the second shape and few more points for the third shape and when you have more time you can of course spend more time making those tweaks I will try to make this tutorial as, as quick as possible so I'm just you know roughly adjusting those and you can see I've accidentally clicked outside but I will try to just quickly make those changes and not waste any of your time but you get the point and as you can see only few of those sides are actually being curved so this is probably the last one now I can uh, subtract uh, those pieces one by one maybe I will just adjust this point to have the line the same the in between line the same okay I can uh, subtract those one by one or I can just select all of those select the format shape merge union and then I will subtract all those three shapes at once I will zoom out and I should have the head together with the crown so all that's needed is just to set the right fill which I will eyedropper uh, use eyedropper tool to sample this color from the original logo and set the outline to no outline and voila we have a nice looking Premier League logo done in Microsoft PowerPoint in under 15 minutes and that's it thanks for watching